Hello, everybody. Welcome to an episode of In My Opinion. My name is John. My name is Alastair. Yes, and joining us today, and we got a very special guest. He was about to say, and, okay, his name is Daryl. <laughs> we call him Dago. How about you let our audience know who you are, Dago? Okay, what's up, guys? So, my name is Daryl Go, and my lovely friends at TSL started calling me Dago. Yeah. So, to put it simply, I'm a year three computer science student in NUS. Mm. And how I met these two, uh, yeah, they, I just kind of my colleagues back when I was an intern at TSL. Mm. So, there is that. Very good. So, he brought up an important point. Year 3 student, computer science, NUS. Alastair, what are we talking about today? Okay, so... Uh, the, why is that important? Why is that important? Because, uh, I mean, university is starting soon. Unfortunately, to all the university students out there, I am so sorry, including yes. myself. So, I'm also a year 3 psychology student and unfortunately, by the time this releases, it's the first day of school for me. I think SNU starts a week later. NUS probably starts around the same time as us. But it's the start of school. And so with that, yeah. definitely there are new incoming freshmen and everything. And I know you guys are, are all lost because I was lost. And I'm sure a lot of people are. So we just decided to like, you know, come together and give a little bit to do a little podcast about some of the things we have learned over the last like two years mm. in uni and for John three years in uni. Actually, funnily enough, right, you're all year three. Also, year three, right, but, but technically, after year three, I drop out <laughs> like, because I'm a uni dropout and I'm just not about that life. So today, right, we yes. actually, we managed to uh, uh, gather a panel of people from all spectrums of university life. Mm. One is Scholester, <laughs> who is a scholar, oh, taking right. your parents' tax money to pay and then scoring all the A's. Sin. And uh, someone who is in the middle, which is Dago, Right? And then <laughs> after that, there's myself who figured uh, uni was not for him and at the same time, uni agreed and uni also was like, you are not for me too. And then we broke up. Okay? So basically, today what we're going to do is we're going to give you all some advice whether you're fresh freshman, sophomore, senior, whatever, on how to survive uni. And if you don't survive uni, how to exit gracefully. <laughs> 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 yes. So why don't we shall we begin? Us, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we begin okay, right yeah, now? That's the first first aspect of university. I believe you have some uh, aspects of university that you want us to cover today, right? Yes. Yeah, so I have my helpful notes right here. So basically, we are going to split uni life into three segments. As we probably, mm. I mean, that's probably the three segments you will be more related. You will be more related to. Uh. So you're going to start with. Yes. You're going to be talking about academics as well as social and some extracurricular stuff. So why don't we start with the academic side of university? Because, I mean, your university, you have to be a student first amongst everything else. So yeah. why don't we throw it to Dago first? So Dago, do you have any academic tips for people, whether or not they're in computer science or not? Okay, I have I have a bunch of tips that I would like to give to everyone, which I feel are really, really important. <laughs> and yeah, so the first one would be Make friends in your faculty. Yes. <laughs> especially mm. especially if you're someone new to whatever major you're taking. Mm, so right. let's say I take computer science, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I have absolutely zero knowledge in computer, computing, coding, and whatever. Mm. Yes. I'm pretty sure if I didn't make proper friends while like during my camps or a faculty camp or whatever, right? Yeah. I would have probably dropped out right now because having friends around you and your same faculty is so crucial for getting that help that you might need if you're if you're like a bit stuck halfway and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, so yeah, making fa- don't making faculty friends is really important. And there are things like you you have to do modules with other people as well. So it's good to have a bunch of people that you know inside your faculty that you're able to, you're they're able to help each other out, you know? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, you shouldn't see them as competition, but rather more as a group of people that are willing to help each other uh, type university together, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. I, I agree with this, eh? Especially mm. for, for for science majors. Mm. Right? Because like I was in engineering, right? So like this was one of those things that I felt that like I was kind of lacking in because back in the day, back 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 when I was still in uni, right? Mm-hmm. I never really bothered to go and uh, form the groups within my classes. Mm-hmm. And I didn't join the like the faculty activities or the camp. So I don't know anyone there besides the people that I attended class to uh, attended class with. Yeah. And like 
seeing that I don't attend class as much as I should, right? <laughs> then that was a big problem for me because when yeah. I encounter a problem, right, the only issue, the only way I could like probably solve it is first by, by brute force, which yeah. is always them slow. Yes. And then after that, the last one will be through consultations, which is always not always available. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes, find some collaborators and help you out, man. Correct. So Dago, what's your next tip after that? Actually, I, I, I'm going to just add on a bit to what I said okay, just yeah. now. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I say make friends in your faculty, uh, make friends that you're able to rely on <laughs> as well. You know, people, okay, like to put it bluntly, right? People that are able to carry you, but when you ask them for help, right? Do it, do it uh, with the intention of actually learning and improving yourself instead of just teaching off them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, mm, because... Yeah. Because uh, if you mooch off people, it's all the time. It's it's not it's not very nice, mm. <laughs> Yeah, I got it. Mm. so you get it, right. Everyone gets it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Don't, don't, Just don't, don't be an don't asshole, be beach, guys. Don't be yeah, an don't asshole, be right? An asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't be an asshole. Uh, like really go in, when you ask someone something, right? Be sh- be sure that you learn something from it, or uh, mm. not just because you're gonna hit a deadline or whatnot. You must really learn. Correct. You know, correct. put that put your mindset that you're you're actually there to learn. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I mean that goes like to the big point of being a uni in the first place right you are there to like learn and hopefully you are doing something that you are passionate about so that makes it a little bit easier but even yeah. if you are not you are there because you want to improve yourself in the field that you have chosen mm. so yeah, I think that's a very important point uh. okay so Dago what's the next point okay so uh, my second point yeah. is that self-learning and independence is key I agree Hundred percent. I think okay. Wait, wait. Are we all JC kids? We are. We yeah. are all JC kids. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Spoon fat, <laughs> all these spoon fat people. Yeah. Ooh, wow, don't know what's up, one. Don't Step know into what's the wrong. real world suddenly. Yeah. 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 So let me let me let me just put it out there, okay, for all you JC people who are super used to the school system way of education all the way up until JC from primary school, secondary school until JC, right? Mm. When you step into university, right, suddenly it's like oh boy. like you feel a lot of freedom because the reins are very free. But at the same time, suddenly you're supposed to uh, essentially drive a car with no manual or the manual changed and you suddenly from auto car need to drive <laughs> manual car. Yeah. So yes. like, I yeah. think like, like this, this whole point that Dago brought up, brought up about like independent uh, learning and all that kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Will not come naturally to you. Mm-hmm. I know it didn't for me. Okay, like for me, it was still an alright transition. I mean, you scholar? I don't like, okay, <laughs> let's not discount that. <laughs> for me, it was why, still okay. Why, why was it okay for you? Because Lester, I Why think was it okay for you? Like, from when I was in JC, I already didn't like that the school was so structured. So, I always yes. did stuff my own pace anyways. So, it was, it's normally slower than a normal school standard. Lah, but, like, I did it at my own pace. So, I had to study a lot of the things yes. myself as well. But, mm-hmm. so, when it came to uni, it was a lot easier. But even then, right, it was still a big shift. Because there's really no one right. to make sure that you are on, on schedule. So, like... There's no, like, freaking printed timetable that they give you, right? Nailed, it's just... Yeah. Just yeah. do yourself, man. You, you print you yourself. Your own time <laughs> yeah, table. correct, correct. <laughs> you, you go and take the if you go and find a printer and print your own damn timetable yourself. But like, yes, yeah. I think like, um, when it comes to uni, I mean, in the easiest way to like keep track of your progress is doing homework, right? Like, if you are coming from JC, that's the easiest way. Like, if you do homework for a certain topic, means you have kind of understood the topic, maybe not to exam level, but at least you checked off a checkpoint. But in uni, yeah. there is no uh homework unless it counts in your grades. So, like, or rather, even if they, <laughs> there is, right, they won't check that it counts in your grades. I mean, they won't check oh, that, right, yes. like, you're, you did it. Yeah. So, I've gone to, like, tutorials and, like, haven't opened the worksheet kind. So, and, like, <laughs> they won't check and they don't, they genuinely do not care. So, I will mm. say that, like, um, you have to, you have to go and take your own time and effort to go and make sure that you are being independent and actually studying yourself uh, because there's no one there to like do the checks and balances for you as well right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then Dago, how do you yes. cope with this? How did I cope with this? Uh? Oh, well, I, I, I really died in year one. I'm just <laughs> <saying>. <laughs> <laughs> Having that in, the, in that, that nature where you have to check your your respective school websites all the time for updated tutorials, lectures, uh, tests and everything. You have to check it Constantly, every single day, whether there's a new announcement, even your school email. And I didn't do that for like Sam 1 and 2, I think. Wow. <laughs> I didn't do that much. <laughs> and I, I missed out on a lot of things that were sent in the email. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I learned quite 
hard lesson from that. And mm. and yeah, don't 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 do it like me. Like, just just make it a routine from the start. Like force yourself to actually you know check it once every day from mm. the very very start. And once it becomes a routine, that's when things become a bit easier for uni life. Because yeah. put it simply, right, mm. your year one, right, is gonna be the most hectic. Uh, it can be the most fun, but it can be the most stressful time of your uni life. But once you go to mm. year two, and uh, if you establish that lifestyle already, uh, things will get a lot easier. Because that's what uh, that's what I, I felt. Uh, year one was horrible yeah. because I no discipline. But <laughs> but uh, once year two comes around, uh, you start to get used to it. Mm-hmm. And also to add on to my first point, right? And that's why having a group of friends around you that does the same. Mm. same uh course major and everything right uh, it's important yeah. because they are people that will remind you about important things as well mm. i can't even remember the number of times i hit a deadline like an assignment just because someone reminded me that there was an assignment you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm. <laughs> so I mm, year one was a doozy man i yes. yeah i didn't enjoy my year one or so the transition was not fun uh. the especially because it came from army right like we yeah, were so yeah. used to not using our brains and all that, and suddenly <laughs> you are thrown into a situation <laughs> where that's all you do. It's like a bad yeah. transition. I I just suffered them bad in year one. I remember, but once I mm. got to year two and I got like that kind of in the flow of it, it was better la. I didn't suffer la, but like my results did la. So <laughs> like I think I think Dago brought a very important point just now. Re- very important point that is the whole point of it being a yeah. routine. And I think like the main difference when you go into uni, especially from uh from from a school system like JC, for example, right? You are very used to the routine being given to you. So it's like morning, yes. go for assembly, after that, class, 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 recess, class, 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 whatever, then consultation, then whatever, whatever. All these routines are given to you in a timetable format. But now in yes. uni when you're in uni, right, you make your own timetable and then all these additional things, right, are not included inside. You have to own self-plan. So I think it's right. very it's important and like uh for, for, for especially for people like myself who have no discipline, right? I wish I learned this earlier, but I, I impart my knowledge to you now, right? Okay, so like year one, if you're feeling overwhelmed at any point of time, right? It always helps to physically do like a, a, a personal timetable or timesheet for yourself. So I know that like mm. by this time, I'm supposed to be doing what? By this time, I want to take a break. By this time, I'm going to go for my activities and chill out. By this time, I want to go and eat. Yeah. By this time, I want to go and exercise. These kind of things will always help you, right? Even if like this this uh timetable format, right, does not stay true for the whole year, for example, maybe for one month, it's like that. Mm-hmm. But these things will always help you because soon you will be able to learn that, oh, I take this amount of time to do this. I take this amount of time to do this. And I like to do this at this time. I like to rest at this time. I like to sleep in a bit longer on the day that I got no morning lecture, for example. Mm-hmm. That's fine also. So you will realize that all these things take time to get used to. Yes. Right. And if you don't do anything about it, right, you're just gonna get overwhelmed. And then you're gonna get overwhelmed and then you just die. Lo. And then you just mm. suddenly from forgetting re- to read email to forget everything. Mm. All right. It's about establishing a good routine for you la, and maintaining mm. that discipline yes. throughout the entire yes. school life. Can I add in a little snippet of course. for my dear computing friends? Yes, <laughs> of course. Um so self learning when I say self learning is key, right? Um you have to learn a lot of other things in your own free time, like other computing languages and whatnot. Is this for the computing students out there? Because once you try to find an internship, you realize that a lot of things that you learn in school, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's not enough. It's go- not going to be enough mm. at all. Oh my gosh, the requirements are not... Nowadays, they're like some essay or something. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Mm. It's like an essay right now. Like yeah. Just paragraphs and paragraphs. Mm. And... um. You really need to take some time to learn other languages, other frameworks that are outside of your syllabus. Because I didn't do that for year one and year two. Mm. And I'm unemployed for this summer. (laughs) 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 Yeah. Oh no. So during this during this day, during this summer, that's when I kind of like tried to uh pick up all these newer languages and whatnot, try mm. to kind of like put yourself a bit more ahead. Yeah. And yeah, just just do it early. Yeah. Typically in your first summer. Yeah. Mm. Actually, this point of knowing your yeah. industry is, is quite important regardless of major or uh, 
Correct, correct, correct. Mm. Yeah, because like I think one yeah. of the things that can help you sort of like I mean it's it's very it, it feels very purposeless sometimes when you uh just study and then you just chase the next class, chase for a grade, and then see your GPA, and if it's not uh to your expectation, you feel a little bit disappointed. It's very easy to get trapped in this cycle without seeing the objective. So sometimes, right, taking a look at some of the, let's say, like a job requirement or like a whatever that kind of requirement, right, it may help you to recalibrate and uh, it may not re-motivate you, but at least it will sort of like still give you a, a sense of direction. Because when yeah. you work towards something, right, it's better than just doing work and as if you're going forward one day at a time. Yeah. So like looking mm-hmm. at job requirements, I don't know, maybe for computer science, it's a little bit more complicated, right? But I would say for most industries, if you take a look at like say job requirement and stuff like that, you will be able to understand, oh, the world is like that. Mm. You know, mm. After being a student, it's like that. And then the like that got this, this, this. And then what am I doing mm. now? Okay, I'm doing this. So mm. that means in future, I or in my free time, I need to be do uh, these two other things, for example. And that is oh, how you can correct. sort of like, you know, guide yourself or so. Because no one is going to tell you this. Yeah. You know, yeah. you either discover yes. it like ASAP or you discover it too late. There's no in between. <laughs> yes. Guilty uh. as charged. Correct. <laughs> but I think uh, a nice like point to build off that, right, is of course, from what we hear, uni can be very overwhelming. But yes. I'll, I'll, we were actually talking about some of the, these tips like before we started recording and we did one of the tips that Dago actually mentioned was don't get bogged down too much by academics or like this uh, nitty gritty stuff that comes with uni. So, mm. and I think, and I agree a lot. I mean, I, I always like to say that like uni, uni is like a marathon, right? And my ultimate mm. goal in uni right, is to leave uni mentally sound. And I think that sounds really, really stupid when you, when you put it that way. But I think a lot of people leave uni, right? With like semi-broken. You know, some people leave JC and then they are like semi-done with life. And like they are just not not coping very well academically and emotionally and I don't want to leave you yeah. that way like it's Don. it's just a, it's a marathon <laughs> it's a marathon you're a PTSD memories right now it's the, <laughs> the my fellow PTSD Hwa Chong stress oh uh, yeah <laughs> Uh, top school stress. Hell <laughs> la. <laughs> Hell la. But okay, I, I, I can see where you're coming from also. Yeah. Mm. And like, I think, I think managing your mental health is very important. Mm. Okay. So in university, right, uh, one, one thing I realized that uh, really will help you as a student because firstly, you must manage being an adult and also manage being a student. And this is something they don't ever tell you. You just go to uni expecting it to be school, but it's not so clear, okay? You have to manage being a person while being a student, Okay. So one of the things that they never really tell you how to like sort of like uh, maintain your mental health or your mental well-being, right? Is that they don't ever tell you how many options you have for various things. So I give you an example. So yes. like uh, if let's say we talk about academics first, right? So yeah. one of the things that uh, was not told to me when I was a year one and I never really bothered to find out and I never realized until it was too late, right? Was because... Uh, I never really go, I'm not that sort of person uh, and I believe there are a lot of people that are like me, mm-hmm. uh, was that, for example, if you are stuck in a, in a, in a course that you don't enjoy, there is there's an option to change course. Yeah. Which sounds, mm. sounds overly simple to say, right? But I'm pretty sure, okay, for the sake of those people who don't know this information, right, what I just dropped is a, is a golden nugget, okay? But you have options to mm. change course. And like also, you have options to, if you want to graduate earlier, you have options to, uh, uh, take more classes per semester or take more classes per year. So these are all options that are actually out there, right? Mm. You just need to know how to ask for it. Yes. And all these things, including like all kinds of help, anything you can think of, any solution you can find to a current predicament that you have, right? Or I, I don't say for the world, but all local universities in Singapore, confirm have. You just need to know how to ask. I mean, there are other options like LA, like um, yes. even dropping out. I mean... If it yeah. gets to the extreme, but if it's something that mm. you feel like you it needs to be done, it the option is there. Mm. And I think you should yeah. understand the options and understand what's best for you throughout your uni life. Cause yeah. like I always like I mean, after uni, there's you are what, 20, 25, maybe? Yeah, 25 years old after. Uh, for a JC person, you'll be 25. For yeah. uh 40% you'll be 26 for yeah, sure. Yeah, for a guy. Yes. Yeah, so for, 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 for guys, for guys. guys. Yeah. For girls is a bit younger, but like there's still a whole ton of life in front of you. And like, as much yes. as you like to think mm. that it gets better from here on out, it probably doesn't. So, I would say that like, right now, 
focus on your mental health, focus on being able to like leave uni with a renewed motivation to do better in your life and be good in your life. Uh. And I think if yes. if a cat is standing in that way and you're doing very badly, maybe rethink some of the choices you have made, maybe in your course or yeah. maybe in the mods that you have taken or etc. I think that's mm. something that I learned when I ended year one and I almost I almost took an LOA. Like the people mm. close to me will know like like I almost I almost took an LOA slash dropped out after year one because I was so unhappy. And then but like after a while that I started figuring this out and understanding that okay, I need to pace myself better. And now yes. in year two I'm like doing so much better now. So I would say for, th- for those of you that don't know what LOA is, LOA is leave of absence. So basically mm. is you you will uh leave school without actually dropping out. Yeah. Yeah. So Online usually that, period, that period yeah. can be one semester or can be longer, can be whatever. Mm. Right? And these are the things that are actually available to you that you never thought were available until you inside already. Mm. And also another thing is if you cannot cope, right, you, you must realize that every single faculty, okay, faculty as in like basically your major, uh, every single faculty, their un- undergraduate office, right? Yeah. They got counselors. Yes. Mm-hmm. Counselors sit in office shake leg. Mm. <laughs> I'm so, pretty sure they do not, but yes. Okay, they do not la. They, are, they, are, they, are, they, they yeah. do not. Okay, but the, but the point me. is, the point is, the point is, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't wait for you to reach a point where the school system notice you and then activate the counselor to come and find you. Mm-hmm. If you are fa- facing trouble, right? Uh we're letting you know now la, that there are counselors that exist yeah. within the school. Mm. No matter how problematic you feel. Right, these counselors are able to offer you advice on how to improve your situation because uh, the good thing about most local universities is that they don't want to see you quit. Yes. Right. So mm-hmm. they are usually there to try to nurture you. It's just that, right? They don't have because the student body is so different now. They are no longer like your form teacher can notice person B not feeling too good. You okay or not? And then give you more attention. No, mm-hmm. you have to find that attention for yourself. Yeah. Right. You have to find solutions on your own mm. and that's the difference between uni and like normal school mm. and this is how you sort of maintain your your mental health because if you ever reach a point whereby you don't even know what you don't know right i tell you let me give you the default answer if you're lazy to think okay email your undergraduate office and ask how they will give you the options actually they're down mm. there waiting for you for people to ask only they just don't know that they just didn't know that nobody know how to ask mm-hmm. I agree. Mm. i'm not doing well how uh, mm. I want to graduate earlier. How? Uh, feeling feeling very sad these days. Uh, how? I'm I stay very far. I may want to stay hall, but then I don't, I don't never do enough hall activities. Blah, blah, blah. How? All these can ask, and then mm. they'll offer you solution, which might not immediately mm. solve your problem, but at least it's better than you own self down there. Wow, see la, see la, see la, see la, see la, see la, Then no answer, and then you just be miserable. Yeah. Remember to ask, ask, ask around. Don't don't be afraid to ask. Mm. That's. Yes. That's how you find out things. La. That's how you find out things in uni. You have yeah. to ask it yourself most of right. the time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And it always helps, like Dago mentioned earlier, to have a friend who is a senior, mm. regardless of whether it's your, whether it's your course or not. Yes. Having a friend that is a senior who has been there, done that, right? You can save yourself the anguish of making the mistakes that they have made. Actually, like on that point, right? It's actually quite important to talk about like the social side and like the extracurricular mm. side because I mean, if you don't have the social and extracurricular side, how do you know these people to help you through your uni life, right? So, uh, I'm someone who is not very good socially in uni. I only have pretty much one friend. So, Ooh. I'm going to I'm going to pass the baton on to people who are better in the social side of uni. So, Dago and John, what do you guys have to say? I'm so glad that we are the two outside of uni friends that you have. <laughs> which brings it to us being here, being two-thirds of all your friends. <laughs> Hell, uh. Okay, yeah, but anyway, I think I think like I, like one of the points I mentioned earlier, this is a great segue, uh, will be to make uh friends with the senior. And how I how I discovered this was like when I was in because I was in NTU, right? So I was in Hall 6. Oh, Hall 6? Uh for year one, right? Yeah. So like what happened during Hall 6 is that we had this tradition whereby a lot of uh year one uh freshies, they will be assigned uh sort of like during orientation camp, they'll be assigned a senior date. So basically that will be when they born. And that's also how you find out a little bit more about hall and about uni. And that's like sort of like your first senior friend. Because mm. in uni, in, in hall six, they understood that like, oh, you know, we wanted to give the freshies a chance to learn a bit more about university, which is great, which is a great in- initiative. Yeah. And uh, honestly, right, 
I felt like one of the reasons why I, I kind of squandered that is because I didn't know what I don't know, so I don't know what to ask, right? But mm. I think that's actually a great place to start. You can just go in there. Actually, I come uni, I don't know anything. How are and then mm. the, the senior can tell you more. Because a lot of times, if you don't even know what you don't know and then you choose to shut up about it, right? People also don't know how to help you. Mm. Okay. Okay, yeah. great. So, Dago, what are your social site topics? Yeah, this is, I guess, a small tip for... Yeah, this is a tip for everyone. Um, basically, right, when you join university, right, one yeah. important thing that you absolutely must do, in my opinion, IMO, mm. is yes. to... <laughs> Oh. Be, be open to making new friends you know yeah. Okay, yeah. being open to making new friends of like mm-hmm. of all sorts of personalities skills uh, traits and everything um, yeah. mm. case in point like my hall friends uh, versus my computing friends you know mm-hmm. uh, obviously hall friends might be a bit more let's say playful la. I'll say playful right. And, uh, yes. my computing friends a bit more milder a bit more <laughs> quite quiet you know you're being so but, PC right now <laughs> but yeah, you make, make friends on this wide spectrum because um, yeah don't just don't don't try to be stuck up and um, live in the past and say oh these friends aren't these new friends aren't mm. as good as my PSL friends or like, like <laughs> okay wait okay, this is like okay sorry this is like, okay, yes, okay, yes. Yes. Let, 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 why, why don't I summarize it for you like easier okay yeah, so yeah. I get what Dago is trying to say because I think having a wide spectrum of friends is very useful for your personal uh, development and also at the same yeah. time mm. right for you to be able to meet a larger group of people that don't necessarily conform to your standard of uh, yes correct, correct. like for example I was I'm a very messy person so uh, my roommate had a bit of uh, issue dealing with that, but we dealt with it and then we got over it and stuff like that. And yes. I, think, I think the point here is that like being able to socialize with a large bunch of people in a setting like university will actually set you up for the real world in future. So Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. like, don't, don't, don't be too like, how to say, don't be too hard up on your own standards that like, oh, you know, these particular people behave this way. Uh, that means like these people are like bad and I, and I shouldn't associate. No, right? Yeah. Having an open mind in uni is super important because yeah. like the types of people you meet there are like so diverse, especially if you stay like hall or, mm. or like even mm. in your faculty. Yeah. And it's having the, ev- being able to juggle this social aspect is very, very, very useful in future because like these are sort of the type of people that you will eventually grow up and work in the workforce with. Yes, I agree. Right? Yes. And like, I feel that in, in hall, right, what you experience is a very uh, small uh, glimpse of communal living. So it's a very good indicator of what the real colors the true colors are you know yeah, and being able to not only show your true colors but to understand other people's true colors and still be friends is i think invaluable yeah i agree and actually like i feel that like okay i'm, I'm going to start representing the people who are uh, i'll say a bit more introverted or the people who think they are not very socially uh apt or socially capable so i'm someone who uh hated orientation so like when i went to hall orientation i i, I really didn't like it it's not, i don't think it's the fault of the hall the hall or the people i met it's more of it's not really my pace and that's very normal and i think a lot of people achieve go through that as well and in fact it was such a bad experience for me personally that i actually like uh skipped my school orientation because i decided that uh, i didn't want to have to go through the same experience as again uh. and i think yeah it's, yeah very normal because like you know um like some people just it's just not for them la. and mm. the problem with that is that when you go into uni you might feel uh, quite alone because you don't have friends that you made in hall orientation and if you didn't go for school orientation like i did it's even worse because you go to your class and you literally know no one so that's that was where i was at but eventually i did manage to find one friend i, I mean it's just one but like one friend who i actually got really yeah. close to and i'm still very close to now and she actually yeah. managed to like um, introduce me to a whole group of a whole clique lah, essentially. So mm, we managed mm. to actually uh, I managed to actually find a group of friends uh, to hang around with and like eat lunch with and have dinner with and everything. So I was saying yeah. um, I know a lot of people right from the get go it seems like everyone has their own clique already or it seems like everyone has their own friends already and everyone is having a great and swell, t- swell, swell time but it's not and but often not, not uh, but often times right a lot of people actually are uh quite lonely as well and they don't actually have friends so I would say that like you are not alone 
And I'll say, mm. um, take, give yourself some time to go and find some friends. Uh. And when the friends yeah. do come up to you and try to like connect with you, like the extroverts, I mean, the extroverts in the world. And if they do come up to you and say like, hey, like, what's your name? Uh, what, where are you from? Etc. Like try to reciprocate it and try to make friends mm. with them as well. Because I, honestly, you never know. Like, I met my uni friend in a photography class. So it's like not even my faculty one, but eventually sh- I realized that she's my faculty. Yeah. So you never know where you'll make friends are. So I'll say just keep your open keep an open mind. You don't have to be super proactive if it makes you ultra uncomfortable and you really hate it. But yeah. I'll say uh, as what John said, uh, like uh, maintain an open mind. No? I think it's important also because like I think some of these friends may be just uh, may not may not be super deep bonds or super long friends you know but like yeah, basically yeah. you are you all need to like as students and people who are in university you need to recognize that this is a, a setting that you are all put into right it doesn't hurt to have a few more support systems around you know mm, mm. And at the same time like uh being able to 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 you know it's just some people that you can hang out with and like like Alistair mentioned it can get lonely lah so, but at the same yeah. time, you also need to be aware of what kind of person you are. And I think uni will will sort of like bring this aspect out of you, right? Yes. Being self-aware of what type of person you are. Mm. So if mm-hmm. there are certain things that you cannot do, like for example, oh, I really, really hate having to sleep pa- sleep after 10 p.m., for example. That's fine. That, that, honestly, personal, personally, that's fine. That's a personal choice that you can have. Yes. But you must understand that if you make the conscious choice to be a part of something that may result in that, like for example, if I choose to join a join a hall and hall and then I do an activity that pushes me past a certain time, you need to understand that that is a situation that you put yourself in. It's not something mm-hmm. that uh oh no, because of me the system must change. Mm-hmm. That that's a very entitled way of thinking and it's not mm-hmm. fair to the mm-hmm. remainder of your of your friends, lah. Yeah. Right. If this is not something that you can live with, yes. then you need to accept that this is not something that you should be a part of. Mm. If not, right, you are you are sort of like compromising the whole uh, communal living experience for the rest, lah. Mm. And this is something that like I realized that a lot of people, especially when they just came come into uni, they find it difficult to reconcile that so that like when they discover this about themselves, they want the environment to change instead of changing for the environment or on the other side of it is if you cannot change for the environment, you accept that the environment is not for you. You do something else or you mm. go somewhere else. I agree. And that but, one is important. Yeah. I mean, you need a time for self-discovery, right? And like, mm. you start to understand like, uh, you start to come off it, like coming of age and like understanding that what you can live with and what you can't live with. Like for me, yes. I understand that like, I'm not very good with uh, big social interactions or I'm not very yeah. good with like, whole stuff because I'm generally not a very social person as much as online it might seem like I am. I'm gen- generally not. La. So yeah. I understand that these things might be a disadvantage for me in certain areas but I don't get hard up mm. over it. And if I'm not a very big hall person, I don't choose halls that require very big commitments. So I choose halls that are a little bit less, like a bit more lax in terms of the commitment and everything. La. And mm. So that's the way I cope with it personally. And I think that's the best way. La. I mean, I, mm. I do agree. I do think that you sometimes might have to sacrifice a little bit about what you like and put yourself into uncomfortable situations because you are learning and you are growing, right? But at the same time, if it's something you really cannot live with or live without, like for example, sleep, etc., then you have to be able to uh, shift your your school life around to fit around that. And if you can't, you kind of have to accept it. La. Accept it or leave. Uh. Or leave. Right? Leave the situation, yeah. essentially. Which is actually not not not, not that difficult. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. if we are talking about the... Like, right now, since the focus is hot, la, but there are a lot of other things yeah. that you can leave. What If you feel that a particular group of friends is detrimental to your academics and academics is super important to you, it ought to be, then it's really okay for you to leave a group of friends. Yes. Right? It's yes. the same for a whole bunch of other things. So. Yeah. Yeah, I also want to add on to this particular point to what yeah. John said, mm. you know. Um yeah. don't be afraid to make decisions that uh that would help yourself, you know. Don't compromise, mm. yeah. don't compromise your comfort or 
what you're feeling, right? Just because yes. you want to be a part of something. So, yes, I yes. agree. Yeah, yeah, so like I, I wanted to mention uh, one of my points was that uh, especially especially if you're in hall, right? Yeah. Don't lose yourself. Don't lose who you are, your self-identity, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. You must always take some time to be alone, you know? Having like, yeah. okay, because all student, you know, but I didn't yeah. join a shit, uh, cra- crazy ton of CCAs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I feel that people that join too many things, right, they tend not to have a lot of time for their own well-being. And in essence, right, they get jaded and burnt out from the whole experience really, really quickly. Balancing mm, schoolwork, yes. balancing whole CCAs, balancing all your mm. so uh, HD, HD talks at money and two AM in the morning. Life. Yeah, exactly. Uh, normal stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drinking beer, going club, exactly. club really Hi, pie, nice you know. <laughs> take some yes. time for yourself. Whether it is yeah. 30 minutes, whether you need two hours, you know, take some time, mm. reflect a bit. I mean, there are definitely people out there who like are able to uh, handle more and who love these things. Like they really right, love right. all, mm-hmm. they really love social interactions and that's something they live for. That's what they are in uni for actually. Like people who really want the whole experience. But yeah. for the rest of us who are just here to study and like hopefully make friends, like a small group of friends, right? Understand that it's not for you and uh, you don't have to try to f- try too hard to fit in. Uh. Yeah. Eventually you'll be able to Uni is so big that you'll be able to find a group of friends for you. Yeah. Even if yes. it might seem like you can't, eventually you will. Uh. And that's from my own experience. Yeah. yeah. And I also want to say, yes. do not FOMO. <laughs> do not, <laughs> do, please do not FOMO. If you need a break, okay. yeah. just take a break. Just yes. tell your friends. People will, mature people will understand. If they say, hey, I mean, they will do the standard, hey, come on, come uh, on, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you yeah. must be firm. Yeah, yes. be firm. <laughs> correct, correct. If they are mature, they yeah. will understand. There's always, mm-hmm. like, I, I even wrote it down, there's always another night that you can go drinking. <laughs> 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 yeah. Correct, exactly. Yeah. Don't, don't feel like you have to be a part of everything all the time. Correct, correct, mm. correct. And I think this is, this can tie into something practical that I want to share on like, staying hall especially for people who are super into hall because personally when I was a student right I was one of those people that are super into hall yeah. and like uh, one thing that sort of like helped me uh, uh, understand the hall system a little bit better was because I'm super enthusiastic into all, all of it so if you're someone who is super enthusiastic into hall right you need to pick your hall activities wisely mm-hmm. you need to mm. pick the hall CCAs wisely yeah I cannot speak for NUS because it's, it might be a slightly different system. But for NTU, it's a very, it's a very simple system. Okay? Certain activities award certain amount of points. Yes. And certain activities give you a certain amount of, like, say, weightage. Okay? Yes. So there are some things that a lot of people work very hard on, right? But then they reap very little rewards as compared to some people who do, like, the smart things also work very hard, but they reap the rewards and then they can stay another year for haul. So a very simple thing is, like, for example, if you feel like you're joining too many in NTU, we call it subcommittee, yeah? Yeah. Subcommittee. Ooh. Okay, mm-hmm. you're joining too many subcommittee, right? You're doing the wrong thing. Just quit. <laughs> okay? Join a few more main committee. In fact, you just need yeah. a two or three solid main committees, right? Uh, be part of EXCO or certain CCA in your hall, right? And those are the point earners. You yes. do you do 15, 15 subcommittees, your results tank, you feel super tired every day and then next day you don't get to stay hall. How? Mm-hmm. I agree. Must be smart, right? I agree. So choose the activities wisely. And this also will come back to what Dago mentioned earlier. You don't need to go for everything. One. Just because you got five friends in five different activities means you must dip your toes in all five men. No. Mm. Right? You do, how about you do three, then the remaining time you chill out with the other two. <laughs> okay, anyway. <what? laughs> right? Correct. In fact, this was a tip that John gave me when I first entered uni. It was like, I told him I wanted to go to um, PMP subcom. And he looked yeah. at me like, no need lah. Go subcom. to main com, bro. Go <laughs> like, main com. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, okay. <laughs> then I actually did when go to main com and I did manage to stay in hall. So I think mm. that's a very good tip. NUS, is it similar? Yeah, it is similar. But our subcoms actually can earn quite a bit of points also. <laughs> Oh, okay. mm-hmm. if no, 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 not say cannot, not say cannot. Not say cannot mm-hmm. But like the, the reason why I'm saying this is because there are some that I do have a friend that like went for it is basically involved in every single hall activity. Mm. Mm-hmm. She wanted to die. 
But like, she was in subcom for everything. Yes. And oh. then she nearly not enough points. And oh. then that was problematic because I think myself, that is super disproportionate already. Then you correct, like, correct. you burn yourself out and then everything sucks. Mm. Okay, you share NUS. Uh, okay, so like, I okay, this is Shears Hall I'm yes. speaking yeah. about. And uh, generally, if you want points, right, um, it is good for you to join a few committees, whether it is a uh, as a main comm member or a sub comm member. Uh, on, okay, mm. honestly, I'm not the best person to say this because I only really had, uh, in year one, I only had one main comm and one sub comm and that's all my CCAs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had to go through this thing called master list to stay in school where I had to take mm. on a prominent like position. Uh. Yeah, yeah. And I had yeah. to go through interviews and everything. Uh, yes. But yeah, sub comms do give quite a bit of points as well. And yeah. I would say that, okay, when it, but yeah. please, right, when you join a subcom and when you join, if, if, especially if you join a main com, right, make sure yeah. that you know it is something that you can handle because yes. there's, there's, there's going to there's gonna be a lot of people that will be hard to work with in your subcom and income and you really don't want to be mm. that problematic person you know because mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's that's my problem with the whole system because when people have 10 cc uh, not 10 that's a bit of a but maybe people yeah, have like yeah. five to seven ccas right the problem yeah. with that is that you never have time to fully focus on one of them. You're really just touch and go on each of them, you know? And if you want yeah, to yeah, put in time for all of them, right, you must remember that you do not major in hall. <laughs> you, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You do not major in hall. Correct. Ultimately, preach, you're, brother, there, preach. you're there to get a degree. And yeah. that's why you must really, really do your research and know what you are capable of and join yes. things that you know you are capable of doing. Because mm. you don't Absolutely. want to be detrimental to other people, you know. Yeah. Especially, yes. especially when you have important things coming up, and then you always can't make it for meetings because, because uh, you have another, you have another meeting in another CCA. That ha- that's going to happen a lot, and you're going to have a lot of meetings at twelve a.m., one a.m., and what not. You know? Yeah, I agree. Um. Yeah. So basically, my point here is that, uh, when choosing your CCAs in hall, especially right. Make sure you're yeah. taking on things that you can handle. Go find out the schedule. Go see how it coincides with your own timetable, you know? Uh, yeah. Try, try to find out from your seniors what, the amount like of workload. What's the workload, level? La. Yeah. The amount of workload yeah. that it might take for something in particular. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. because mm. just saying, right, the amount of time you spend on your CC, right, is probably going to be more than what you might think at the start. Yes. And yeah, I agree. And, and 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 that's gonna be one of the factors that may affect your mental health, like what Lester is saying. I agree. Yeah, you must yeah. be mm. so disciplined. You must be so disciplined to make sure that you can handle all these things at once. And yeah, uh, another one is that as much as you may be scared that you may not have enough points to stay yeah. for the following year, right? Mm-hmm. There's I'm not. I'm not saying this as a get out of jail free card lah, But there's always another. Sh- there's always another option in. I think the NUS halls and it's called master list. Where, yeah, like yeah. I said, you will probably take up a, a rather prominent position in a committee, or like mm-hmm. a sport or CCA, and yes, yeah, you'll be able to stay for that lah. You're able to stay with just taking that position and maybe another position elsewhere. So that yes. is another option if you really, really, really need to stay hall and you just don't enough have points enough up. points. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. In, in NTU, we also have the same is we have hall rack. Right, so yeah, you can get racked in. Rack up. It's basically the guest list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Essentially. La. But I think, okay, I feel yeah. like we are painting a very uh, big picture of uni so far. So why don't we, I mean, you have 10 minutes left on this episode. So, mm-hmm. I would say, why don't we end on a better note? Um, yeah, I think it should be a bit, a bit more positive. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best time of your life, man. 
Correct. Uh, okay. I, I would say that uh, there might be some initial growing pains. There will be some pro- things that are very different. But eventually, uh, if you just stick at it and you do your best and you work hard, and as what uh, Dago say, like, don't take on too many things. Like, if you really yeah. streamline yourself, understand yourself, and like, do the things you really like, right? University can yeah. be very, very enjoyable. And especially with the right company, uh, with the right friends, and yes. with yes. the right people around you. And like, even for me, even though I don't do um, CCAs in uni, I do YouTube on the side while I'm in uni. So I still get to keep yes. in touch with friends like John, like I'll go through this. Yeah. So just mm. about finding what you like and finding how you can do what you like while in uni. And I think uni is a very good time to, right. uh, for lack of a better word, screw around and make mistakes. And stumble and fall because here's yes. the here's the time for you to do it la. and I've stumbled a lot la. so I yes. think that's the best the best time is now and eventually if you manage to do it right you, you really can enjoy yourself quite a lot but give yourself time mm. uh, I want to add on to Alastair's point like yes. about the hustle yeah um, okay, yeah. Uh, first, first I, I want to say that uh, if when, when you're in university right since yeah. you're able to plan mm. your timetables and everything, you can plan for little pockets of space of free time and whatnot, right? Yeah. And, um, okay, uh, so what you can use that time with, what can you use that time for, I mean, is that yeah. try to find a side hustle. Yeah. Right, right. Like mm, yeah. Something you might be interested in but haven't really started. Try to do something new. You know, like Alastair yeah. with mm, his YouTube mm. and everything. Try to find mm. that side hustle, you know, something you're interested in. And possibly, right, if you could, right, you can use that and turn it into something that can generate a bit of income as well, you know. You don't yeah. have to, it doesn't yes. have to be it doesn't have to be your main thing. So take it as developing a hobby into a potential skill. You know? Yes. So yes, for, for example, absolutely. for example, Alastair, he is doing his YouTube as a content creator, you know, podcast, and he gets money from adverts and whatnot. Uh, and, <laughs> Not a lot of money, but yes. And and for me, um, yeah, because I was, I was, I used to work in TSL as a creative, same as Alastair and John. He John yes. still mm. there. And yeah. mm-hmm. uh, with my creative work, uh, I am able to like do maybe some small side jobs like videography or photography mm. for a bit of, a bit of spare change as well, la. You know, <laughs> yeah, a bit yeah. of spare change. You know, so. Mm. You is utilizing that small those small pockets of time that you might have to develop something new would be a lot more productive than just using it as free time. Although yes, using yes. free time for yourself is important as well, you know. Yes. Yeah. Mm, and I agree. Uh, but don't don't go too hard on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have because yeah, you're gonna see a lot of hustlers out there in uni. Mm. crazy mm. Pe- a lot of people that hustle really hard financial advisors everything and mad, <laughs> mad respect to them you know for putting in all that work but don't feel that you are lagging behind them don't yeah. feel don't feel jealous or envious or like oh shit I, mm-hmm. I should be doing something you know because yeah, yeah. that kind of mindset uh, in the long run is going to be more detrimental to you. Uh, okay, so I'll say like a bit yes. from experience. Um, because I didn't secure any internship for this summer break, right? And yeah. I looked around at everyone and they were doing internships and everything. And I was just looking at them. I was feeling so really stressed out because like, I was feeling really stressed out because everyone's improving. You know? Everyone's improving themselves every yeah. day. And I'm over yeah, there just yeah. stagnant and whatnot. You know? And I tried to make sure that I did something every day to improve myself. But in essence, mm-hmm. every... Every time I try to take a break, I would subconsciously yeah. kind of think that I'm wasting time. Correct. And yes. it's still something I'm uh, having, you know, but yes. it's, it's getting Working better. But yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, not a, it's not a good mindset to have either. You need to take time mm. to take a break. I know yeah, it sounds I stupid. Guess. It sounds stupid, but you must know <laughs> how to take a break. I think yes. you guys might yeah, know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I mean, Definitely. It's, uh, ultimately, everything I do, even though you see on YouTube, you think that I'm like hustling, right? Really, the only reason why I'm doing it is because it is keeping me sane. And this is mm. making me very, very happy. So it might mm. look like I'm yes. working hard or I'm like trying to build a future for myself. But honestly speaking, that is like 
almost completely not on my mind at all when I'm doing these things. So it's like, ultimately, my priority in uni is for me to enjoy. And I know that I'm in a very privileged position that I can think so, but um, mm. I think most of you are as well. So I'll say, yeah. uni is time for you to enjoy, have fun, mess up, make all the mistakes you want. Yes. And, mm. yes. Um, explore yourself uh, and explore who you are as a person. And I think exactly. if you, and if you go into that mindset, right, I think you need to be very productive as it has for me, yeah. even though my first year has been absolutely terrible. <laughs> mm. yeah. I mean, okay, and, and I want to give, give my two cents worth as someone who has been there, done that, right? Yes. So, I think uni, like I mentioned earlier, can be the best time of your life. It can. Honestly, yes. I feel that for most people, it's going to be the best time of your yes. life because mm. you will meet new people, you have fun, you learn new things and then, you know, and then it just, it's just crazy. It's like your first step into adulthood but in like a Xiao safe space kind of setting. Yeah. But at the same time, right, I firm, I always like, I I, mean, I wish I reminded myself of this this quote earlier by my one teacher that I have, right? But like, I'm just going to leave this as a piece of advice to, to all our uni students and all our freshmen, regardless of whether you are in a local U, a private U, whatever, it always works the same way, okay? And like, yes, it can be the best time of your life, but having too much fun without discipline, right, is dangerous. <laughs> it's yeah. very easy to do the easy thing, right? It's very easy to do, to just have fun. Of course, who doesn't want to have fun, man? Somehow you have fun most of the time, not on your expense somehow, you know, living away from home. Even more shook, right? Everything seems to be Ooh. great, right? Ooh. But if you have too much fun, right, without discipline, right, it's just gonna, it's just gonna end up poorly for yourself and you have no one to blame but yourself and you may realize that this hole is dug so deep, right? It's difficult, to, it's so difficult to get out of. Mm. So, I'd rather you're going to uni, remember that you're there to have fun, but at the same time, also at the back of your head, have this little voice to remind yourself that like, when, you're, when you start to feel it, you're having too much fun, right? take a step back and stop that. Yes. Right? Because you don't want to dig the hole too deep until you cannot get out. Yeah. Yeah, Before the whole form, you should step away from the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And I promise you, you will still have a lot of fun. Mm. I'm having a lot of fun and I'm still studying quite a bit. <laughs> so I think it's still very yes. possible. And with that... Yeah. I think that's a very nice way to end it, right? Hey, can like, I have some closing closing thoughts? Yeah, yes, go ahead, Dago. Tell us Take your some, wisdom. Relish your time in university. It's likely going to be your very last time being a student. You know, being a student, mm-hmm. you still have time for CCAs. You still have a flexible weekly timetable, no 9 to 5, no 9 to 6, whatever. Yes. So, yeah, before you step into that world of adulthood, relish your time as a student. This is the most freedom you're ever going to get. Mm. yes and also make friends expand your connections meet people because you will not get such a chance to meet so many young like-minded and interesting people around you when you go out yes. to the real world have go fun out, have make fun some guys friends. have fun and be um, and have fun lah. just have fun and be yes, decent right. get drunk maybe have less fun. than five times <laughs> less than five times uh, <laughs> whatever is a healthy amount and with that Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you guys have any comments, just go ahead and comment down below. Uh, good luck for yes. all the incoming freshies. I'll be right there with you. We are all in yes. this together. That'll go be there with If you all have anything you all don't know, okay, just ask in the comments or you can DM either of us. Our Instagram handles are below. Okay, yes. We'll give, you a, we'll give you advice, you know, whether you want to f- don't follow it 100% percent, nah, huh? but at least let us share some experience yeah. with you because yeah. we understand how daunting uni can be, especially if you're a freshman. Yes. And with that, thank you for watching and see you next week, guys. Peace out. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Follow at Dagoyaki.